So we're going to talk about gravitational and frictional force today. How does gravity relate with mass, weight, and motion of an object? So we'll start first by talking about what kind of forces do you think is involved in skydiving? So gravitational and frictional forces are both at work in skydiving. Gravity is a non-contact force while friction is a contact force. So we'll go to friction uh, after we talk about what gravitational forces is. So uh, let me give you some of uh, some idea about it. So when one object touches or rubs against another object, there is friction. Friction may change the motion, the amount of energy exerted, or the shape of an object. Friction is a contact force, while gravity is the force that attracts or pulls objects towards each other without direct contact. Gravity causes an object thrown upward to fall back toward Earth. It also holds planets in orbit. Now, in this chapter, you will learn how forces such as gravity and friction affect the motions of an object. We'll start first by talking about force. Now, force includes friction. Now, friction exists between objects in air, water, and in solid objects. Friction may be controlled just as well. Now, right after that, force also includes gravity. Gravity depends on the mass of an object and the distance between objects. So, after our chapter concept map, let's go directly through our very essential question. How does gravity relate with mass, weight, and motion of an object? Another one would be that our big idea in talking about this one would be Earth's gravity pulls any object on or near without direct contact. Now, let's talk about gravity. So, what comes into mind when you hear the word gravity? Of course, the person who discovered it. Okay, not to the, the person who made it or invented it. So, those are just some of the memes that you can see on Facebook. But rather... According to a popular story, Sir Isaac Newton, an English physicist and mathematician, got the idea of the law of universal gravitation when an apple fell on him while he was seated under the tree. This, this event apparently convinced Newton that there is a force between Earth and the falling apple. He called this force as gravity or what we call gravitational force. So, try throwing an object or a heavy object in the air. So the gravity between Earth and the object will make the object fall to the ground without gravity. So the object will remain floating in the air if there is no gravity present. So you might ask me what about the other places or other planets they have they have some objects there they float the gravity is still present at those planets, okay? But it just has a lower type of gravity. So we'll go there eventually, but we'll talk about the gravity on Earth. So gravity is an attractive force. It pulls objects together. Next would be that gravity... In Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, states that the force of gravity acts, upon, uh, acts between all objects in the universe. So, gravity is an attractive force. It pulls objects together. Newton explained that gravity depends on the masses of the object and the, and the distance between them. Increasing the mass of an object increases their gravitational force, and increasing the distance between them decreases the force. Compare the gravitational attraction between two bowling balls with the gravitational attraction between two ping pong balls. So I think you already know what I'm getting at. Like for example, in this picture, 
may it not be the bowling balls or the ping pong balls. You can see there's a hammer and a feather. The hammer, when where gravity and air is present, you will notice in this picture that the hammer fell first at the bottom. But in a vacuum, like in space, all of these objects will fall at the same time. In a vacuum, it will be done. In a vacuum, once again, all of these objects will fall at the same time, while on a certain place, like in a, in a planet, like planet Earth, where, there, where air is present, you will notice that there is what we call a frictional force uh, combined with gravity. That's why the feather did not, fe uh, did not fall at the same time as the hammer. So as you notice here, as we mentioned earlier, Earth's gravity pulls any object on or near without direct contact. So what are our examples here in our book? Let's go to page 270. Newton extended the idea of gravitation to the motion of the heavenly bodies, meaning the planets. Moons, planets, and the stars have larger masses that make their gravity strong. According to Newton, Gravity is the same force that pulls the moon in orbit around Earth. Since the sun is bigger than Earth and the other planets, the sun pulls the planets and keeps them moving in an elliptical orbit around it. Now on Earth, the force of gravity that pulls an, an apple or any object towards the ground is its weight. So again, the force of gravity that pulls an apple or any object towards the ground is its weight. So the weight of an object so the weight of an object depends on its mass so your mass will still be the same even though you are in different places planets in space but your weight will not remain the same okay the greater the mass of an object the greater is its weight the weight can be computed using the equations as written here on page 7, 270. The gravitational field strength on Earth is about 10 newtons per kilogram. This means that a mass of 1 kilogram has a weight of 10 newtons. So if you try to get your book, and if you, have, if you don't have one, let me explain you. Uh, write it down. If your mass is 40 kilograms, so write it down. What is your weight on Earth? So again, Earth is about 10 newtons per kilogram. So you can pause this video and try to multiply 40 kilograms times 10 newtons per kilogram. Don't forget to cancel the kilogram. Okay, so your answer should be 400 newtons. Your weight is 400 newtons. So will you have the same weight on the moon? Of course not. You will have the same mass, but your weight will be different. The gravitational field strength varies in location. The gra the gra gravity is weaker on the moon than on Earth. Thus, an object will weigh less on the moon than on Earth. As one moves farther away from the surface of Earth, gravity de decreases. Okay? Understand? So, let's go to the next one. So, what we understand is that it's you versus how we understand gravity and, and mass. So, again, when we talk about mass, it doesn't really change where wherever you are but weight does change even though even if you travel from other planets if it's already possible for us to do that that will change your weight but right now we can only go to the moon and know the difference of the astronauts weight compared to earth's weight from there Okay, this is also an example of what I'm talking about earlier. So, I uh, just try to analyze this picture. 
So a man with 200 pounds or 90 kilograms is weighted here on Earth by its gravity compared on the moon, his weight is different. Now let's talk about friction. Friction is a force between two surfaces that are sliding or trying to slide across each other. So when you try to push or pull a wooden crate on the floor, the surfaces of a wooden crate and the floor slide against one another. The force you exert as you push or pull the crate is opposed by friction. So try to push, for example, your notebook on the table. Do you feel the force opposing the motion in your notebook? What do you think causes the friction between two surfaces that are in contact? If you look closely, if you look closely and examine these objects, you will notice that there are bumps or grooves on the surface. No matter how smooth they appear, the rough edges lock together when the objects rub against each other, slowing down motion. Friction enables you to control movement. It prevents you from slipping when you walk. Smooth surfaces have less friction than rough surfaces. Water or any liquid smoothens rough surfaces by filling the grooves, reducing friction. This is the reason why wet floors are very slippery. And another one would be that friction increases with the mass of an object. Like for example, a loaded box creates greater friction than an empty box when it slides on the floor. Now let's go to talking about what motion is first. The phenomenon in which an object changes its position over time. So friction does not only oppose motion, it also produces heat. When you try to rub something together, like creating a fire or basically just rubbing your hands together. Okay? So next would be on page 273. We're going to talk about air resistance. Now air or air resistance is a type of friction too. It exists between air and an object moving through it. That's why earlier we were talking about how in a vacuum, a heavy, a heavy object and a lighter object will fall at the same time. But on Earth, we have air. That's why the heavier object falls first before the lighter object. How does air resistance affect motion of an object? An example here would be this GIF picture here, or GIF. But in your book, like for example, a parachute, a parachute is acted upon two forces, Earth's gravity pulling it downward and air resistance opposing its downward motion. Air resistance provides a lifting effect which slows down the parachute's motion, enabling the parachutist to land safely on the ground. Air resistance also opposes the forward motion of a moving motorcycle. To increase the speed of the motorcycle, the engine has to work harder to counteract the effect of air resistance and to keep the motorcycle from going. So what are ways of increasing and reducing friction? So we're going to ways of increasing and reducing friction. So as you can see here in some of the pictures that are moving, friction can be controlled. Friction may be increased by making surfaces rough. Rubber tires and soles have threads and spikes to increase Friction for travel over ice and snow. Handles of a tennis and badminton rackets are wrapped with rubber and rough clothing materials for a better grip. Friction is sometimes unnecessary. It can wear out tires faster. More work is needed to push heavy furniture or machines. Friction can also reduce the efficiency of machines. So can you cite some ways of decreasing friction? Okay, there are different ways to control friction. Rough roads are covered with asphalt to smoothen their surfaces. Rollers and wheels on heavy furniture, bags, or luggage can help reduce the surface in contact to reduce friction. Lubricants such as oil, wax, and grease on machines allow moving surfaces to slide, slide smoothly over one another. A lubricant is a substance can, that can also reduce friction. And other 
examples. Like, for example, bowling lanes have polished and shiny surfaces to reduce friction, so on and so forth. Most common example would be, again, water, which can increase and decrease. Okay? Sometimes it creates friction, which you feel that there is a force that opposes your motion when you swim. Flowing water creates friction against rocks too, as water continually rubs against the rocks together in shape and size of the rock change because of friction. So we can see here an ice cave. This, some of these are just benefits of how friction is helpful for us, writing, a match, a matchstick lighting up, and of course rubbing hands to make yourself warm. So what is our takeaway in our lesson for today? So let's go back to our chapter concept map. So we have force includes friction. Friction exists between air, water, solid, may be controlled. Force also includes gravity, which depends on the mass of an object and the distance between the objects. Okay, goodbye, grade 6. See you in our next lesson.